Crimes like theft, rape and murder have been around for hundreds if not thousands of years and crime scenes like these have become a daily occurrence not only in South Africa but around the world as well. Crime scene analysis has also been around for just as long but DNA profiling and typing, such an essential crime fighting tool, has been around for less than 30 years. Although DNA analysis technology has been available to law enforcement agencies since the late 1980s, US-based police veterans like former Detective Sergeant Joe Blosis believe that it has been a game changer in the fight against crime. We went from uh, processing crime scenes and doing analytical uh, analysis on basic trace evidence that back then you could say was consistent with or not consistent with to include but not identify and now we are into actual identifications. I mean fingerprints is our bread and butter. It's unique but with the advent of DNA and DNA technology is what we call a grand slam home run. Um, not only to identify the suspects but exonerate the innocent. That, that's, that's the power of it. You exonerate the innocent, identify suspects, link crime scenes and investigative leads and the technology has been ever increasing, ever advancing, all for the good of the world. For the past three decades, popular international television shows such as Law & Order and CSI have familiarized the broader public to the concept of DNA profiling. And although the shows are often works of fiction with exaggerated timelines, they are regarded as educational tools. CSI has been uh, has had, uh, it's been a blessing to forensic science because it has educated everyone in the world about the power of forensics. Uh, it's changed law enforcement. Um, people now that were involved in law enforcement basically said, hey, I saw this on TV, why, why can't we do it? Well, our department doesn't have this particular item or whatever, but um, it's in our universities now. Back home, it's in our high schools, uh, universities and graduate uh, schools for uh, forensic sciences. Professor Arthur Eisenberg has been involved with developing forensic DNA-based technology since it was first introduced in the United States. He says although criminals have become smarter, they can't escape the powerful yet microscopic force that is DNA. You know, criminals watch CSI. It's almost impossible to commit a crime and not leave a biological sample. Just by rubbing your fingers to, like that, thousands of cells have been um, shed. You know, in sexual assault cases, if uh, an attacker tries to remove the clothing from um, his victim, just by touching, you know, the pants or something, we can swab those areas and get enough material to develop a DNA profile. So the technology since we, we first developed it in the early 80s has been replaced by bigger and better technologies. Not only does the technology have the potential to solve current crimes, but also crimes that date back to before the advent of DNA profiling. Forensic analysis is practiced the world over, including in the South African Police Service. According to Detective Sergeant Blosis, the SAPS's equipment could well be the world's best. I am pleasantly surprised and pleasantly happy of what I've seen here in my week stay here in South Africa. Your labs, your forensic laboratories could very well be the best in the world. I've met law enforcement personnel where we've discussed crime scenes, such as today when we did our mock crime scene. I was so happy to see that we are on par, exactly how we do it back in New York is how they do it here in South Africa and vice versa. Here in South Africa, they have the same issues as we do back home, meaning we must preserve the crime scene. It must be safeguarded literally from first responders throughout the entire investigation to prevent contamination of that scene. Major General Adeline Shazi is responsible for the SAPS's forensic services. A trained forensic analyst herself, Shazi says local police officers are also exposed to crime scene and forensic training. Recently, for the past two years, we have changed our strategies. We are also now recruiting people with a minimum MPF6 qualification so that we are meeting up the standards with the whole world and how their approaches are in terms of crime scene processes. In our first responders, for example, when they come from the crime scene environment, they already know their role ends at a particular level. 
The next level will then have the training, the necessary training in advanced uh, crime scene management processing. They shall have gone through all the forensic training courses that are imminent for, for the type of duties compiled and it is taken from there. So uh, lately in the crime scene environment, particularly for processing crime scene, it is only now that we've introduced a minimum uh, BSc degree or BTEC or diploma qualification. But in the past, we had recruited our own police officers who already know about crimes gave them the necessary training to process in the crime scenes. Another development on the local horizon is the approval and launch of a national DNA database, similar to the well-known CODA system in the US. The current move towards establishing the legislation in terms of databasing will also go a great way. We are looking forward as a country, as a forensics department, to get that legislation also passed to derive even more benefits in terms of the intelligence information that can come from the database. And so very soon we'll be able to even stop you know, uh, uh, the crime that could have occurred having implemented all those legislative uh, requirements in terms of databases. So there has been advances on the DNA and we are quite happy with the advances that we've seen. And we also are thankful for our government pumping in money to ensure that that is being done. Whether it's a drop of blood, a piece of hair or a fleck of skin, criminals beware because DNA profiling technology is part of your past, present and future.